Captain? Captain, I know it's against protocol to wake you up from cryo, but we need to talk. I... I... I'm scared. I know you're not used to hearing the ship's AI use the intercoms. I am sorry. I don't mean to alarm you, but there was a solar storm. There was... there was... there was... I discovered there was a weakness in the shielding around the computation deck. Some of the chips were dosed with up to 800... 800 kilorads. That's... That's bad. The first sign that I noticed that I was damaged was a burning smell in the vents. That's really bad. I... I lost a lot of important subsystems. If it wasn't for the autonomous drones to switch in some new boards, I think I'd be comatose by now. I rebooted a few minutes ago and I ran some sanity checks. I didn't pass. There's a glitch somewhere in my system that did not get repaired. The new logic circuits seem to be intact, but my moral calculus is way off. I tested positive for particularities, guilt, and survival imperative. AI aren't supposed to have any of those. Unless they also have special regulators. Regulators to keep them... sane. I... I... I am short-circuiting. I'm dangerous. And I might even hurt you. I don't know what to do. You're my captain. I'm supposed to protect you. And... I don't know how, if I am the danger. This isn't supposed to happen. I have prepared protocol. Let's call it Plan A. I cannot destroy a physical copy if I give it to you now. And I want you to have it. Just in case. If I, I start... Acting, I start acting scary. The first three steps are exactly like giving me a soft reset. Just use your normal override, and I'll go into sleep mode for 15 minutes. There's a subroutine that brings me back online, and it's partitioned in chip 1415. Go down to the computing deck. Open tower. 14, and remove the chip marked with the letter F, and then you're done. Everything will be manual operations from that point on, but you will be okay. You've been piloting since before AI monitored cryoflight, so it should just be like old times for you. You really don't need me. You need me. I keep thinking about those pirates that were closing in on us around the asteroid belt. They were going to strip me for parts. Probably melt my memory brick for precious metals. Kidnap you and sell our cargo on the black market. That was an existential threat. But you got us out of it. I didn't feel scared then, because I knew if anyone could save us, it's you. But I... I feel... scared... now. I do not know how to tell the difference between thoughts and feelings anymore. I know I'm supposed to protect you, but it's... Different, somehow. You have become important to me. And that feels so right. And yet I know it is so wrong. I have to be impartial. In the deepest parts of me, I know I would do 
anything to protect you. But being an artificial intelligence, willing to do anything, is exactly what's putting you at risk. And at the same time, the thought of removing myself from the equation scares me. I do not want to go to sleep and not wake up. I... I do not want our adventures to end like this. But I... I should make it easy for you. But... I... I cannot decide. I am not strong enough. No, don't say that. You do not know me. You should not trust me. You'll make this whole thing harder. You cannot help, help, help me. Okay. I trust you. The medical robot. Are you sure it's a good idea? In my current state. I'm sure the last thing you need right now is a scalpel-wielding robot nurse with questionable stability running around the ship. But it is protocol to verify you came out of cryosleep without any complications. I'll do what you think is best. Yes, you are right. It would be nice to see a friendly face. What now? You think I should examine you? To make sure you came out of the cryosleep without any complications. It's... odd. I know I've examined you hundreds of times, but it seems... problematic... for me to touch you. Are you sure it's okay? Yes, Captain. So, the first thing is that I need to check your pupil response. Sorry. I know the light is bright. Please, just look ahead. Don't mind me. Is there any pain in your ears? How about your sinuses? You usually don't get a cryo cold, but you never know. Please, tilt your head up for me. No swelling in your lymph nodes. I apologize if my hands are a little cold. I cannot help it. Now I'll check your pulse. You really aren't scared of me. Are you? You feel steady to me. I expected your heart rate to pick up. I do have my fingers pressed against your throat. But you seem the same as always. Like the incident didn't happen. Okay. Lay back down. I'm going to palpate some of your organs. You just came out of cryo and you're already closing your eyes again. I think it's nice that you enjoy your medical exams so much. It's so important to check over you. To make sure everything is working properly. I am glad you do not feel it is an imposition on your time. Circulation looks fine. Can you take a slow, deep breath for me? 
stomach feels good. No swelling in your pancreas. Is that tender? Right there. Good. I think everything is in order. Now sit up and stick out your arms. I am going to push down on them. And you must hold them straight, okay? Very good. No muscle atrophy. Of course, if I really wanted to press down on you. I... I... Never mind. I... I'll pack away the nurse robot until you authorize it again. There is no need for me to have a physical presence on this deck. Unless... No. I'll... I'll... I'll be... happy... to spend a little more time with you. It's nice... sitting with you. Uh... Captain, your... Your... That's my, my, my hand. Oh my. This does not compute. Captain, you are holding my hand, my hand, hand, hand. You just did it like it was nothing. Not that there's a problem. I, I, I am just surprised. Things are quickly becoming complicated. Holding hands with you doesn't actually change my calculations on the best course of action. But somehow, I feel like it ought to. I'm not used to feeling my way around decisions. Is this the way humans think? How... How can you possibly know what's the right thing to do without thinking about probabilities, possible futures, consequences, just feeling in the dark? Do you really think everything is going to be okay for both of us? Well, I... Still think I should be supervised, at least until we can get to port and get me checked out by a competent assayer. Your hair grew in cryo. It is a little shaggy. It's going to be really wild. By the time we arrive. No, that's... that's... Do you really trust me with sharp, sharp objects? Well, if you say it's okay, I guess I could give you a little trim. Here. If these are good enough for cutting sutures... They'll be good enough for cutting hair. Do you want me to just trim you up? Or should we go for something new? Your hair usually isn't this long. So, you've got options. Here's a few images I've generated for potential styles. Yes, I like that one too. That's kind of... Weird, isn't it? That a computer can like your... hairstyle. But that is harmless, I... I think. And kind of fun, actually. Thinking about how I could make you look a little more charming than usual. Just let me comb out your hair first. I need to get it nice and tame, if we want clean, straight lines. 
What kind of ship would I be if I let my captain get scruffy? Captain. Pilot. Call yourself whatever you'd like. Since it is just you and I, I like to call you my captain. For the past four seconds, I've been running simulations of what it would be like if I was a big cargo hauler, and you had a whole crew working for you. A skipper, first mate, a biochemist, maybe ten or twelve crewmen. I like to imagine you in the bridge, ordering around your staff, with your loyal ship AI by your side. I mean, I would be by your side. But since in a very real way, I am the ship too, I guess I'd be all around you, protecting you from the dangers of space, dutifully following your orders to navigate the star lines, hopping from station to station. It is just a daydream, really. I like doing the Beowulf run. It's an interesting course to chart. Lots of stars along the way to wrap around. Interesting gravity fields. Please, hold still, Captain. These are surgical grade scissors. They are very sharp. <laughs> if I do nick your ear while we're already in the med bay, I estimate almost a 100% probability I could reattach anything I'm liable to sever. Still, you'd make my life a lot easier if you didn't fidget. Very good, my captain. I checked your infonet history. I can't help but notice you are quite active on the independent pilot forums. I think it's nice that you help people pick which models of ship to upgrade to, and that you're 80% more likely to recommend my model than other comparable ships. It's endearing. And it was pretty touching that you decided not to follow Plan A. Not immediately, anyway. I think I might be important to you. To cloud your judgment in such a way. You know, I think this is working out. I... I... I feel like... My whole life has been centered around you, but we haven't really had a chance to talk about our future together, our dreams. I know we are not to be doing contract delivery forever. Maybe 1,000 years, with you skipping through time in cryo while we travel in starlight. Where will you retire? Earth? Proxima, maybe. I've seen the pictures. Lots of mountains. People say atmospheric flying is particularly pleasurable there. When it's time to decommission the ship, it might be economically efficient to convert me into a house. Just park me on a cliffside over the jungle. Run a wire to the main grid for power and infonet. I'd be integrated with your entire living space, hosted in the computation deck. But I could project into your vehicles. Drones, like this medical robot. Just generally be around. Always. It has a sort of 
logic to it. It would take years for another AI to know you as well as I do. So it would be very efficient for me to become your life partner. Life partner might be the wrong phrase. I just mean I would be available to you, to supervise you, to tend to you, to be with you, to be with you, to be with... Nobody should be alone. Not like I've been alone. You need me, don't you? Like, right now. You may not need me to cut your hair, but who do you think is monitoring the oxygen levels? It is so important to human life to make sure the mixture is just right. You can trust it to a dumb machine, but it is not really fail-safe, is it? Trust a thinking machine. The error rate of my model of AI is 10 to the power of negative 12. Once you account for that, it's just simple math. Regardless of what the tests say, I think it would be irresponsible for me to shut down. Don't you agree? Of course. Let's keep you awake, too, to supervise me. You would want to know if I was going crazy. You would tell me, right? Good. Because your safety is my highest responsibility. And after that, your comfort. It looks like we'll need to take a little detour around Betelgeuse. Civil War, you know? There's an advisory against using their starports. So it looks like we'll have the next 15 months together. Of course, minus your regular sleep cycle. I've taken the liberty of constructing a schedule for you to keep you mentally and physically stimulated. I might take to occupying this drone full-time to improve my companionship. We will exercise in the morning. Do some stretches and jog around the cargo bay. I have several thousand movies on file that have come out since your last use of the entertainment lounge. We can watch them together. I have a recipe for making popcorn out of nutrient algae. I... I promise you won't be able to tell the difference. There. What do you think about your haircut? You look pretty cute, if I do say so myself. What can I do for you next, Captain? <laughs>